What's up, guys? So recently, I've been tinkering around with a, a bunch of different projects, uh, one of which was combining a, a couple different uh, techniques to, to come away with something kind of different. Uh, it, it combines uh, like a 3D technique uh, called anaglyphs uh, and, and a collage technique called uh, joiner photos or joiner collages. And, um, and I did it on HP5, which I pushed to 3200. And I came away with what I think is pretty, I don't know, some, some pretty interesting results. And uh, that's what this video is about. How do you make a joiner photo? Joiner photos are made by taking several smaller shots of a, a larger image and then stacking them kind of like a collage to create the full image. This was popularized back in the early 80s by David Hockney, who would use Polaroids or prints to make his joiner collages. I made a, um, a little photographic experiment with the Polaroid by putting 30 of them together made a, a photograph of this house in a way that I've been trying to paint the house from d three different viewpoints. What if I want to digitally glue my photos? When I was creating the composite of my subharmonicon, I would open the individual scans as different layers. I then took those different layers and I would arrange them in a composition that I liked by stacking them and uh, to make it easier to line up, sometimes I would drop the opacity a little bit to help see underneath and uh, line them up a little bit easier. After I was happy with how everything was laid out, I went back and changed some of the color channels and uh, inverted some of the layers. And what the heck is an anaglyph? Anaglyphs are the uh, 3D glasses effect that I'm sure we've probably all seen somewhere. It's where you offset red and cyan to create a, a series of added dimension and depth. Making an anaglyph is really pretty easy. Uh, so what you want to do is, you know, get, get an image uh, that you, you want to create an anaglyph out of. Duplicate the layer, so that's Control j is a shortcut to create another copy. And what we want to do is we're going to split the color channels in each of these layers. So one is going to be red and one is uh, going to be cyan. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. You can open up a dialog box by double-clicking it. That'll bring up your color channels here and your layer styles. And we're going to uncheck green and blue. Hit OK. Um, we're going to do the same thing to the second layer. OK, double click, open up your layer style. Uh, all right, uncheck red. So green and blue is going to create cyan. Hit OK. Name that cyan. Cyan, OK, whatever. Cyan it is. So all you have to do to create this effect is um, go ahead and like offset these layers. And there it is. Now this isn't exactly the way that I used the technique on my final image, uh, but it's basically going through the same process. Now when you throw together some joiner collages, some anaglyphs, and the contrast that you get from pushing HP5 to 3200, uh, voila! Visual interest. Or, or at least I think so. So, you like to push 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 the films to ISO 3200? Developing HP5 at 3200 was a first for me. I've, I've shot HP5 at 800 and 1600 plenty of times with great results, but I'd never pushed it three stops before. I had some fresh D76 on hand, so after looking through some online suggestions about times, I settled on developing for 19 minutes at 75 degrees. And a quick life hack that I probably should mention about cooling down your developer to a working temperature. I used to make ice baths to cool everything down until I realized that I could just put the cup of developer in the freezer. And, uh, you know, it, it's way quicker, and I'm sure this is going to, uh, you know, be a catastrophe if it ever spills, but, uh, but it's, I don't know, it cuts the time significantly. While initially I was a little bit concerned because I hadn't pushed HP5 uh, you know, this far before, when I pulled the negatives from the tank, I breathed a little bit of a sigh of relief because everything looked great. After scanning everything in and getting a better look, I was definitely happy with the results. The images were contrasty, which you know, was expected, but it still retained plenty of shadow detail uh, without blowing out the highlights. And since I was shooting HP5 at 3200, I figured it would be worth it to get a couple indoor low light shots, so I popped into the Capitol and grabbed a couple. 
Now, while I'm happy with the results, I think some of these uh, I, I may be underexposed by like just a maybe a stop or so. Yeah. Uh, but you know that's user error. That's on my behalf. So this here, uh, that's that's just str straight out of the tank, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. And after seeing these results, I'm thinking about, I don't know, maybe doing like a head-to-head -head comparison between uh, T-Max 3200 uh, and then Tri-X and HP5 shot at 3200 uh, just to see how all three compare. What other stuff did you try? It took a few rolls to land on a composition that I was happy with, uh, but before that I, I got a little bit experimenty. Cutting up some of the negatives from the first roll, I used a light table to create like a negative joiner collage. While that definitely was cool, it wasn't exactly what I was after. I want a little bit more color in the image, uh, which is why I started tinkering with the anaglyph technique. So that's kind of what I've been working on um, lately. Uh, it's, it's kind of fun to mix things up a little bit, you know? Not to say that film can get boring or, or stagnant or anything, but, uh, you know, just kind of throwing in weird stuff like this. I, I think it, I don't know, it's kind of fun, at least for me. Uh, but have you, you know, I'm kind of curious to know, have you guys tried either of these techniques um, in, in anything that you've done? And, uh, yeah, let me know in the comments. And, uh, yeah, yeah. How many times did I say yeah? Yeah? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Hope you guys are well. Um, till the next video, we'll see ya.